Today, we're going to be showing you exactly how to install a heat pump into absolutely any home in the UK, regardless of age or how well insulated it is, for a price comparable to a boiler swap, yet still saves more on fuel bills. And we're gonna be demonstrating this in the supposed impossible to heat pump home that led our CEO to join HeatGeek. Multiple heating engineers told him his 120 year old solid brick home simply could not be done. Too old, too awkward, nowhere for a hot water cylinder, the list goes on. Well, we've cracked the code for all homes and we're going to unveil exactly how we've done it. Nearly a year ago, we visited the impossible to heat pump home and our proprietary home scanning software showed that it could hit a guaranteed at least 360% efficiency with no radiator upgrades, pipework upgrades, or any insulation upgrades at all. Well, today we're installing it. Comment what you think. Will we hit our guaranteed performance efficiency of 360% or will this whole thing end in embarrassment? Watch till the end to find out. That's a confidence of a professional. I have no idea how this is gonna work. But that's between me and you, so don't tell anyone else. The main change we've got is getting the cylinder into the cupboard. They've measured the cylinder to the exact millimetre of what they think they've got space for. It's not allowed for the fact that nothing ever fits. But yeah, we're going to get the old boiler out, get it in, and actually yeah, physically get the cylinder into place and see what we've got. Like 80% of the homes in the UK, Adil had a combi boiler no hot water tank and no room for a typical hot water cylinder. And so this was actually the property where we came up with the original solution of the mini store. A super compact hot water solution that comes in various sizes, small enough to fit in a kitchen cupboard. If you have this issue, the smallest unit is just 625 mil high by 475 mil wide and can easily fit in a kitchen base cupboard. Alternatively, we've now also developed the nano store. This is even smaller than the smallest combi boiler on the market and easily fix in a kitchen wall unit. We do have some more testing to do on these this winter, but so far the results are extremely promising. So watch this space. I'm confident we'll get it, it's just how difficult it's going to be. We didn't know what, how much space we had behind this boxing. It's just how easy is it? How much hair am I going to lose doing it? I don't know much left. Getting this first thing right will make every single potential future issue way easier for you. The heat loss estimate works out how much power your property needs to heat it in the depth of winter and therefore how much power your heat pump will need to produce. Historically, the heating industry has been absolutely terrible at this and massively overestimated for contingency. Adil had suggestions he'd need a huge 10 to 16 kilowatts of power, and this would lead to all sorts of issues, like having to site a much bigger heat pump somewhere in the house, have much bigger radiators, much bigger pipework, and upgrade much more radiators in numbers, and also the electrical system upgrade, all of which add cost and make heat pumps completely inaccessible to normal people. This is one of the reasons you may hear that heat pumps don't work in old or uninsulated homes. However, in reality, any home of any age with double glazing, which by the way is over 93% of the country, can have a heat pump installed and save money over a gas boiler. There's no specific need for wall insulation or even loft insulation. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, it's just a lie it's needed for a heat pump to work and save. We waited for just, just in time. One of the things that often catch people out is solid wall insulation. Several recent studies have shown that solid walls like Adil's actually have between 15 and 40% less heat loss than is used in current heat loss calculations. And there are even similar studies on single gray sash windows too. By making sure you use a knowledgeable heating engineer with good heat loss calculation software, which there's now plenty about, you can maximize your chances of getting this bit right. To create your own DIY calculation, you can look at your gas data, Deduct 5 to 10% for cooking if you have a gus, gus cooking cupola. Then multiply your remaining usage by your boiler efficiency. Seasonally, that's 85% for a modern gas boiler. Then deduct 5% efficiency per decade of age of your boiler. 
Then divide by 1500 for your rough required heat pump size or heat loss as a rough guide. One super easy thing all homes should do is to insulate your loft though. It has a super quick payback in heat loss, but also compounds in your heat pump efficiency, as I describe in this video here. We have devoted a lot of the space to the kitchen and stuff and extended that out even further into the, the garden. I know all the typical places you'd consider putting a heat pump are taken up. Right next to the house isn't an option, the end of the garden isn't an option, and there's no space around the sides of the garden. And so what Wes and the team had to do was to figure out like a, almost like a jigsaw puzzle. How do we get the equipment required, having reduced the amount of equipment that you would typically put in, but how do you get what's required to make the thing work into the very tight space that we have? Heat pump space is going to be a challenge for the terrace homes representing over 25% of homes in the UK. Not helped by the one metre rule, which is an old, outdated rule that means any heat pump in England that's sited within one metre of the property boundary or any heat pump larger than 0.6 metres cubed must apply for planning permission, which can be a pain, cost money and takes time. The previous engineers at Adil's home all suggested 10 to 16 kilowatt heat pumps, which would all mean you need a much larger double fan unit, way over the 0.6 meters cubed limit, and would be much bigger to just hide. Because we developed the very first heat loss software using LiDAR technology, we've now scanned thousands of homes and have the largest database of dimensional home data. We then feed back in the data from thousands of installations we monitor to ever refine our accuracy and give extremely accurate results. And this is what allows us to guarantee the efficiency of all of our installations. Using this software, we calculated that Adil only needed around 6.5 kilowatts of power and a much smaller, easier to site unit and can be wall hung, leaving this space here perfectly sited right above the existing boiler. Now, since doing this install back in March, the outdated one meter planning rule and 0.6 meters cubed size requirement for heat pumps has actually been removed, meaning all homes in England should find them much easier to site. Other innovations you might want to look at for space, including using flat roof space, and there are now super quiet heat pumps specifically designed for flat roofs too, split units which have much smaller external units to site, installing at the end of your garden and burying the pipework, heat pump radiators such as these from Panasonic and these from Anzen which don't have an outside unit to install at all, and even these chimney kits to site them in your roof. We've uh, cut off the old, where the flue comes through, so we're using that hole, which is quite handy. So we've got ready to slate stick down, bonding. I'm just going to get the pipe working and connect this bit up. So it's actually, this is fairly straightforward and easy, this little bit. One popular myth spouted in tabloids is that you'll have to replace all of your pipework. Don't get me wrong, that sometimes this is true uh, on the odd occasion, but it's pretty rare and there are ways around it. And contrary to popular belief, older housing actually has the least likelihood of needing to be replaced due to two reasons. One, the heat loss of the property was much higher when the pipework was originally installed, so it needed to carry more energy. However, the vast majority of homes now have at least some loft insulation added since the original pipes were installed and the vast majority have upgraded their windows and draft proofed, probably halving their heat load. Two, older non-condensing boilers worked at flow rates much more similar to heat pumps, so needed larger pipework, meaning older pipework is actually probably near double the size it needs to be. This actually helps a lot with heat pumps as it adds water volume, which all heating systems will benefit from. Even microbore pipe is often absolutely fine as it's generally in newer, more well insulated homes, which again, don't need as much power or flow. You can check out our guide on seeing if your pipework is suitable here. Spoiler, 95% of the time, it's absolutely fine. If you're sure you've done an accurate heat loss estimate and that the pipe sizing calculations have been done accurately, but are still undersized, there are things you can still do if you're like Adil and have just finished refurbing your home and don't want to rip up the floors and walls. For example, you can install hydraulic separation. Now these come in a few different forms and allow you to add a second circulation pump for the heating water that runs at a different flow rate or adds the necessary pumping power. You can also choose to tee your heat pump into your system in a more strategic way that means less flow of water going down one length of pipe. 
as you can see here. We're also running experiments here showing that you can actually sometimes just even add a second pump onto your system rather than replacing pipe work. The single most important point of failure though, from everything from heat loss to plumbing and will totally undermine the whole thing is that you must use a quality engineer. Giving an engineer who doesn't have a deeper understanding of hydronics and heat loss some tricks will likely end up with a cold house and increased bills. We certify and literally go out on site to check heat geeks know what they're doing. So head over to our website if you need one. So the big question, did it work? Did we prove all of our deals past installers wrong or has he become the CEO of a totally fraudulent company and now lives in a cold home? Has a deal ruined his life? It's funny because it's true. Or did we hit our heat geek guarantee of 360% effective efficiency with no radiator upgrades, no pipework upgrades in an old home with solid brick walls and crappy plastic plumbing? We've physically done it. It's physically gone in, but at what cost? And literally financial cost, because the efficiency of the system is what turns into the bills at the end of the day. Well, I'm glad to say the system works, and over the nearly six months it's been installed, it's hit 4.1 or 410% effective efficiency. And it looks like it will possibly exceed that throughout the rest of the year. That should reduce bills by at least 15% over a new boiler if you're using the expensive price energy cap and up to 50% savings on other tariffs. If you want to check this out for yourself, head to the description and follow the link and see the third party monitoring for yourself. We're not fraudulent. Yes. A much more simple upgrade with up to 50% annual savings and it's all enabled by the combination of smart tech and crucially, smart heating engineers. Simply get in touch with your local heat geek on our Find a Heat Geek webpage. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments, like the video, and I'll see you on the next one. How well insulated it is. How well insulated it is. How well insulated it is. <clears throat> Let's go again.